This time we will not be blated. We get ourselves into second draft of the day. Ultra Prime versus WE. This no longer matters for playoffs between WE and TT locking it in. It is for Pride. I need to check up actually whether it affects any kind of standings beyond this. I don't think it does. But all the same, W would like to end things off on at least an even record. Yeah, and uh, managing to up their game score in whatever way they can is valuable. <laughs> Bless you, Sam. Thank first you pick, much. what are we looking at here? So, Decade, first pick this time. Um, uh, well, uh, uh, Ultra Prime's first pick, rather. Blue side Renekton, Vance. This really surprises me, because I feel like, particularly in a matchup like this between Wayward and Decade, where top lane laning stability is such a big thing, why are we banning it on blue side? Feels like that Renekton is so valuable. Um, just to stabilize the game. We saw how badly it went for Decade as soon as he lost that first kill. I guess the assumption has got to be that they don't want to first pick it themselves. And that would just give Wayward a free blind pick of it. He is obviously very famous for his play on the champion. Certainly something he's very comfortable on. Response though is immediately the Karma. Of course it is broken from the Nautilus because that was first picked. They want to lock in, of course, they've banned the Varus themselves. It's a triple lane dominant AD carry ban from the side of WE. Of course, they want to try and claim a remaining champion. Of course, Smolder's up, but it does feel like Smolder's been a little bit more manageable of late. And also, um, WE just haven't prioritized that as much. They've gone more towards the um, utility AD carries. You know, they play a lot of, they're one of the few teams in the LPL that play Jin. Um, it's one of the reasons why we see Jin barred, uh, and like barred bans away from Iwandi at points as well. The Rakan's up for him too, a big moment for that as well. So we'll see whether WE go towards more of that, their style of play and turn towards more utility bot laners. Um, now, this Assault has been played by Yuakai. It can be played into Karma. This actually wouldn't even be a bad lock-in even right now. You already see a low-range champion in the Jax, and you see yourself that Karma in the mid lane. We have ourselves an Aurelian Soul. Okay. Not for the first time, Ultra Prime. Uh, now that this series matters a lot less, uh, they are the ones who are saying, okay, all right, let's see if we can get up some, uh, start throwing some curveballs in. I'm kind of sad they didn't curveball in the first game. The last time we saw this around Assault, it was a banger. And the skies will be descending for sure this game. And of course, Jax doesn't have a great time into a lot of the DPS later in. Tries to jump on in and gets hit with an E and then a Q and then an R. And it's all very sad. The Senna's locked in as well. And now the stacking duo here in the mid and bot lane. It's going to be very, very difficult to manage if they ever get to a mid late game uh, with anything resembling gold. And they have them just themselves very long range composition with a Rakan, Karma and Jax. You're not going to outrange that. Now, the Karma can end up throwing a Mantra Q onto some important targets, but say, for instance, Ultra Prime lock in a Shin Sao, which I think is now very, very valuable to them, or even something like Kaka Sejuani could be very valuable here, too. You could just say, look, okay, I mean, we'll just we'll just play front line to front to back. We'll stall out as long as possible, farm up as long as possible. Now, it's worth noting that um, Aurelian Soul's wave clear is a little different from the last time that we saw him, even in Pro, which wasn't that commonly even back then. Basically, right now, you are not maxing the E, that little cosmic whirlpool, um, second. You're maxing that last because Aurelian Soul's Breath of Life, the, the, the um, Breath of Light, the, the Q, gets more damage while you are in flight from your W, and the rank of the W increases the extra damage ah. that you do. Also, the stacks you get from killing stuff within your E is less, but the stacks from getting getting Q pops on champions is much more. So he wants to be more of a battle mage and start to actually stack up by hurting people rather than by farming things out instead. Yeah, and obviously there was a, a bit of a, I say contentious, there was there was a bit of a change to the Aurelian Soul, which basically meant that, look, actually this gives you a little bit more agency for how you play the game early as an Aurelian Soul, but it comes at some of the cost in terms of other parts of the game. I know there was a big threat from Riot Proxen, I think Freak at the time, talking through it in terms of this was just the way that Aurelian Soul players preferred playing, bluntly. So it does give you a little bit more work on the W and Q combo, as you were saying, a little less value on the E, which was a huge part of that kind of stalling gameplay that was in there for a while. That singularity is still obnoxious, of course, because it still holds minions in place, but the lack of stacks you get from it, the slight lack of scaling that you used to be on it, definitely hurting just that little bit more. Uh, the lock in here, though, Looking like the Cassante actually still means that this Jax no longer reflects. I would say Jax could still be flipped. The Cassante locked in means I'm looking at the Jax jungle. The Shinsau is still available though, as you kind yeah. of hold it. I feel like that's a pretty easy lock in now for Hacker. Yeah, but I think that's the root. Well, the reason why they want to put that Jax into the jungle is because I think they assume the Shinsau is coming and Jax is a good matchup into the Shinsau. Mm -hmm. So that's why W are kind of willing to give that one up to say we'll have a good jungle matchup where we can win a lot of our skirmishes early on. 
Ultra Prime still need a front line though, somehow, somewhere. That Shen Zhao's part of it. The Udo can be another part of it. Decade locks that one in. Udo versus Kasante. We have seen that pretty much the entire length of this split. And the last pick, as we said, it really should be that front line. I feel like you have enough damage and enough things. Okay. Right, we're going towards the Graves instead. And he's saying, okay, it's a very low range composition from WE. I still feel like though the front line would have been more stable to play around. It's just an easier composition to play. Stay debating a jinx. He's certainly very <clears throat> professional on the champion. That's how many of the LDL AD carries purely from last year. Jinx was absolutely everywhere alongside the Aphelios. And so it's locked on in. Of course, it's alongside a Rakan. It's really the greatest lane of all time. But more importantly, you can kind of try and match with the center scaling somewhat. And when the Nautilus and Rakan might well be looking to roam to join up with their junglers, those AD carries pretty self-sufficient in terms of their ability to farm from range. So, Ultra Prime, they have themselves a very long-range backline. We have seen some Graves, um, Graves standard compositions from the likes of um, LGD, because yes. Meteor played a lot of it with Xiaoye as well. They played that combination. We've seen it from FPX. They've played it. This combination is basically just, you know, someone goes into the fight, you throw a Q ult from a center and then the ult from Graves, and then effectively someone just disappears, or at least half the HP bar does, if you're trying to force them out of a fight. So that's kind of the play. I just wonder whether the front line from Ultra Prime will survive long enough for this combination at range to hold its ground and do the damage it needs to. Eyes on the rift then. Ultra Prime falling in the first game puts uh, Thunder Talk Gaming out of playoffs, but they can still look to play for pride here. They've locked in a slightly spicier composition, certainly something a little more unusual. The Graves and, of course, more importantly, the Aurelian Soul in the mid lane. The unusual picks for the current meta, that's for sure. Looking to maybe catch WE off guard. Of course, one of Xi the Xi'an hometown favourites here. I think they are actually in Xi'an, if I remember correctly. They yes. have got themselves their own yes. arena. One of the few teams that do. Yes, they get that home field advantage where and when they can. The only time they don't get home field advantage is when they're playing against another team with an arena. And yeah. then it's um, they play a home game and a way game in the entirety of the year. WE though, as you said, most of the time it is in front of their home fans, as we do hear some gyros in the background as well. But um, we don't have headphones on, so we can't actually hear them. You Gyo. can. You can. Yeah. That's that. <laughs> Tell you what, top esports fans the other day, they were not happy when they were doing their gyros, actually. They said some uh, certain things after the oh, gyros. Really? Went, yeah. Yeah, I was seeing that on Twitter, where they were basically saying bad things to their, uh, I think it was their, either their coach or the general manager. Anyway, LDL folks. LDL drama. Yeah, there's a lot of it. Folks, you've heard of the truck matter in LCK. If it weren't for the fact that you're not allowed to have trucks on the street during direct daytime, they would be flooding the place in LPL. There. These fans are very, very passionate, and they're very, very vocal. Um, now, the thing is, with team, uh, that team like Team WE, they have been, I, they have been a team which, if you are a fan of them, and I know there are a couple of them around in chat as well, there are a couple which I speak to occasionally. Uh, looking at you, Wub. Um, <laughs> but basically, this team has had so many good upsides, that particularly into the mid split when they brought in Stay Over Prince. It really felt like this team, but even when some of the series of Prince in as well, it felt like WWE could actually be genuinely a top four team as they came around to the back half of this split, especially given their schedule. They dropped some really bad series though, so for them. This is kind of like the bare minimum, I suppose, of um, in terms of get, just getting into playoffs. Exactly that. And, you know, it's not necessarily that Prince has been obviously atrocious and AD carry player, but the, the desync between him and his lane partner, the desync between him and his team and team fights, proven really problematic. The last time we saw Prince out, of course, was caught out on this wild flank from an Alistair that was just not warded off by the team, but Prince was too close to a blind bush. All those kind of things happen. And Stay has just been you know, more stable, bluntly. And again, he's a guy I have a lot of time for. And he needs to be a little bit aware of a very early gank. It's not really what you expect from it's a Graves. It's not an easy level two, but it's on the wave crash. What can they get here? Okay, going forwards goes at Wandy, but now Hacker just gets to quick draw in. Look for some damage. I think they've just gotten the kill. Trying to get one bad flash forward. Can't get the auto. First blood to the Graves. Flash goes away from Doggo. Iwandi so close to getting a kill. In this bot side, but in the interesting pack. Oh, it's Hackerman again. It's Hackerman again with his early pathing. I was about to say his interesting pathing. No, it's just Hackerman. It's what he does. He's just always been this jungler who's known to be one of the best junglers, you know, five to 15 minutes into the game. That kind of like early game. He does it again here. See that it's the wave crash. He doesn't do it, just red buff into running bot lane. He goes red into Krugs, waits a bit for the wave to be pushed up, and then he can run down. Uh, I wonder here on the bot side, force him into a bad play under turret. Gets himself on the board. 
Well, no, no, because Doggo is down both summoners and Hunger was pathing this way. It could just be a delay on the damage dealt because now Doggo has no way to get out at a third HP. Hung will just leap strike over the wall. It's a decent hook onto the Jax and actually Doggo is spending a fair amount of time. Now he gets rooted onto the turret, but they just haven't got aggro. You're right. They tried to make it happen and the HP bars get low, but no one dies and... It's just a delayed kill onto Doggo instead. Oh, Chway tries his best under turret yet again, but he just can't he can't get the damage done because the tower needs to be doing that damage. They end up holding that aggro for a very long time, and sadly for Ultra Prime, despite that first blood going over to their jungle through that bot lane, it's evened up by Hung on the other side. And WE, now they get themselves into a decent position um, in this bot lane too. Jinx is very, very happy right now. Oh yes, and of course it is the farming Nautilus, of course, so losing a little bit of the farm or losing a little bit of time in lane isn't the worst thing ever for Doggo, but it's still pretty rough. Of course, you want to be getting those souls as fast as you can. We'll get a look at the replay because Doggo just doesn't have summoners and there's no one important who's taken aggro right now. Well, no, well not even anyone who's taken aggro right now. It's not even just like, oh, someone important taking it. It's just they just don't hit the champions until it comes after the mobility is already gone. Exactly that. They root people up, but all the CC is gone, so it's really difficult to play that one out. And uh, Ultra Prime just fall a little short in that bot side, and WE pull off a pretty clean dive, all things said and done. Decade doing what Udias do early, which is throwing down a Wingborn Storm and shoving the wave really aggressively. It's just what Udia does. Um, we're getting ourselves components starting to get built up. Um, hack up with the first blood. On their way to that um, first lethality item, Dirk early on, very, very powerful for the Graves. Sometimes we see junglers stop off for early Doran's Blade nowadays, um, particularly for the early skirmishing junglers. But when you get first blood like that, you don't really need to. You can kind of just do whatever at this point, and um, it's, it's kind of fine because you've just gotten past that point where you can get to a very important um, early component. Hacker and Hung with the, the Phage and then the, the Dirk, very, very powerful actually before mm. first items. Yeah, they are very difficult to manage, that's for sure. Rui and Sol you know, managing to farm up just fine in the mid lane. It's down a little bit of the CS, but hey, that sometimes just happens. Uh, interestingly, it's Decade who roams over to help out Hacker with the grubs as well. Uh, and they'll start roaming down towards the mid lane. And you're kind of okay at this point as Ultra Prime, as long as the Guild Lead doesn't get any worse. In fact, they're the ones with the Gold Lead nominally right now. So if they can hold on just fine, they're feeling okay. Yeah. Little W forwards plus the Breath of Light doing some work there. And Dragon <laughs> looking to be straight it. back. And actually, so, do they want to come over here? Well, sadly, that Breath of Light didn't actually get any damage down at that point. Right now, though, all, all Yuikai is doing is looking for stacks. I don't really think they're looking for a fight here. You don't have the Asol and a really good point of power, which means that Ultra Prime shouldn't be jumping uh, up like this. Yeah, that's a bit bold because, of course, then the jungle backs away, which leaves the bot lane out to dry. Doggo throws down the Curse of the Black Mist, but I think all it really does is delay... Santa being put into an early grave. Realistically, Ultra Prime were never looking to contest that. You have an early game assault. All that, all Yuka is looking to do there is say, how much of my W can I get onto Fofo to get these pops which can give stacks over? That's the most important thing because if you can get like those full bursts, you get a lot of stacks from champions nowadays. So one of the big things that changed about assault is less about farming up with stuff like this and trying to clear out minions. Much more about hitting champions itself. So sadly for Ultra Prime, disconnect between mid jungle and bot lane. The astral flight ended up changing paths and uh, delay on the flight, it left out the bot lane. A little bit to dry on a desert island somewhere, and they're the ones that kind of pay the price, of course, overstepping themselves, really. And actually puts W into a very good position at this point. Two kills on the Jacks early, Hung feeling very, very happy uh, to keep going. Obviously, had a very strong Maokai game the first time around, yeah. now on a more of a carry option. Well, the Maokai wasn't doing his own did amount you, of work. Did you see who got MVP in I game didn't. One? I feel like I might have been the option. The chat, if someone spotted, we'll keep yeah, I was, I was kind of running around doing different things in, in the background, and I sadly missed out who the player of the game was, so I'm going to keep an eye on chat and see if anyone has, can update us on that one. It wouldn't surprise me if it was actually hung on the Maokai. I think the Maokai did a really good job, but mm. hey, whatever. I'm sure whoever got it is very happy about it. I'm sure they feel fulfilled. Um, what would you do if you won player of the game, Alex? Um, I would go buy a bottle of champagne. Wow. Um, and that's, that's, that's hardcore, especially considering you're not really much of a drinker. No, I'd just buy the bottle. I didn't say I'd drink it. I'd just, I'd just <laughs> buy, buy it. Buy it. And look at it and go, yes. I'd buy it and look at it like, yes, I'm successful. Yeah, actually, no, so this is the thing. <laughs> so, um, you know, so I don't dream that big, right? I, 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 I'm, I'm a simple person with simple, simple needs and simple dreams. However, I know I've made it if I own a hot tub. 
If I could just own a hot sub, I think I'd be much happier. I, I think that would be Steinway Grand Piano for me. That, that, that's a big fucking dream. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. They're, they're like five hundred thousand. They are Jesus. not cheap. I just, I just want a hot tub. You know, I just sit that and I'd, I'd sit in the hot tub and thinking, yes, I've made it in life. One of the coolest things I've ever done is play a Steinway Grand. I got to Gosh. practice on it for a few months. It was one of the most awesome things I've ever got to do in my life. It's very cool. It was. I'm very happy for you. I didn't get to do that because I don't play piano and I probably wouldn't have appreciated it as much anyway. Um, should we talk about the game again? Is there anything you want to talk about in the game? I was quite happy to talk about grand pianos. Why, why are you taking Well, anyway, I haven't got player of the game. That's not, <laughs> that's not a surprise. There uh, we go, not a surprise. So, yes, he would. Um, that's important. Thank you uh, to Thummy in the, uh, in the chat for letting us know about that one. So, um, W.E. They're kind of just playing this out slowly. Fofo getting a decent CS lead in mid lane, which is... No, I mean, Yugo has picked this into the Karma a couple of times now, knowing that the Karma is the matchup. The first time he played it, he had a better time in lane than this. I will say that Fofo is getting really good damage on Sir um, Yugo. It's kind of one of these things against farming champions in mid lane. If you miss a couple of skill shots, you can end up being in a bit of a bad position. Alt pulled in top side. I don't know how much this is realistically going to do. There is a jungler coming top as well. He's coming up, and Rumba still has no flash, but can certainly leap strike in. We have that much damage. The rocket comes flying as well and does hit Deke, but of course, the ability to just double tap mm. that. Um... Oh, okay. So we have ourselves um, a lane swap coming through as well with the Grub's um, second spawn coming through. So WE contesting for this. What's going to happen with Ultra Prime? They're not cross mapping. Uh, I think Owandi could be in just a lot of trouble here. It does have a grand entrance and a battle dance to get out to safety. And Ultra Prime are here in force. And yes, WE are around, but they've used a lot of their ultimates already. So I feel like they might just have to give these up. They've already gotten the early set of grub, so one more would secure them, that might buff, and it does look like that's going to come on through with... What, they're going to get all of them? them? Yep, this is all six to wow, their name. okay, right, that changes things, because um, you do have Hoodoo who can hit turrets pretty well in this game. You know, Karma can wave clear, doesn't really threaten the Udo though. Mm. So if you manage to kind of slip a wave into the turret, Udo will be doing a huge amount of work to them. And it also means that there are no grub buffs to the side of WE, which means that they can't kill turrets as fast, which means that Ultra Prime can stand under those turrets and farm up more. So that really helps the ASOL in the center. So, I mean, you've come out of this early game, yes, dragon down, but you even enough in gold. Um, you have six grub buffs. There's only the one dragon down as well. It's not even like multiple were going over too easily. And I mean, it should be a second one by the end of this early game, but I feel like Ultra Prime, they're not in a bad spot here. I feel like they've they've got themselves to a good point. Yuko, once again, just trading out a lot of his HP, just trying to get himself some um, some stacks from his Q. But while this is happening, you know, six grub buffs for a Santa, lots of gold there. This is good stuff for Ultra Prime's early game. Exactly that, recovering after it was looking a little bit dicey, particularly in that bot side, getting the swift lane swap into a shove with the six grub buff means a lot of gold going into Graves and Doggo. Feel very pleased about that indeed. Accelerating both those champions feels pretty good. Wayward is here by themselves, gets hit with the last embrace. But I don't think that particular icy hug of death is going to be lasting all that long. It's just a shiver down Wayward spine, gets to back away. Bot side decade doing what Udo does, which is clear out the way a lot more easily than the poor Cassante. Yeah, and it just means that, again, WE, not only do they not have six grub buffs, they don't get to push in waves nearly as easily because they get cleared so well. Ultra Prime continuing the push towards topside. Wayward getting chunked out. You have a center and a Graves wailing on the turret with, th with all of this grub buffs. And WE, they are not responding well to this. They've taken Dragon, and you can see Hung is taking out Raptor Pit, but now Wayward gets a shove back. That's actually pretty good. And immediately, the moment you said it, the curse is real. They respond by getting a kill onto the Nautilus. They'll still lose a tier two, so it's still probably net positive for Ultra Prime. It is. But yeah. Hung's clearing out all of this bot side jungle. They've got a second dragon. Decade's still going to be forced away from this turret. So it's not like WE get nothing there. Yeah, I don't know whether that was just Barmy's picking up the aggro there. I didn't see how Joy picked up that aggro. Wayward got very low HP, but they couldn't finish him off. And they didn't want to pull out those ultimates either to look for a proper fight. So, WE, they get something back. They break some of this push, but they don't get to. Um, push in towards that bot lane out of right they're currently sat at a, a zilch turrets zero none nada nada um nothing i can't think of other languages for, for zero most of it's just zero and it's just a different intonation yeah, a lot of it either way um joy uh, uh that's a problem he ends up using the e after the q as well it's an awkward moment anyway he goes goes down no ultimates wanting to get pulled from ultra prime to turn that kill around 
unfortunately not for them. They're still up a fair amount of gold, of course, after claiming all of those turrets. You can look to try and turn the favor on this bot side. They do land a hook onto Fofo, who gets hit with the last embrace. Alt we'll get w. the Rue down with the W, and that healing is pretty big with the renewal, so it's just fine. The rocket! Ditch is wide. Really gets a kill there as Stay was looking for a little bit more than a stay home dinner, that's for sure. <laughs> Look, Trey, his greatest friend and his greatest enemies in this entire series have been turrets. One way or another, he's done really well in making sure he can get one for ones and dives. Uh, turns out turrets are also starting to really turn their back on him. Moment. Maybe he's, uh, maybe their allegiances are starting to turn. Um, the skies themselves are turning though, as we do have the skies descend for Yuakai in that mid lane. Has himself a hundred stacks. So the next big uh, fight of the game. Watch for Asol to get involved, has a Rylos on top of that too, which means that um, the extra wave coming out from that ultimate will apply magic damage, and it will slow people after that, so a huge map-wide slow, pretty much. Oh, yes, it's very difficult to manage, of course, the, the builds from Aurelia Assault has been a bit contentious, we've seen people go for the rowers, but Rylos in particular oh, is no. so no. good so, on this champion. On, on release, we saw, well, no, on, on release of the new items, we saw a bit of row, because, oh, nice extra extra levels, mm. blah, blah, blah. But basically, you just need the extra Rylize damage a lot of the time, because you so much extra threat. It means that if you're stuck in the E, you're just taking damage for forever. So it's Rylize into the um, Leandries. It's a good mix of HP, mana, and, and all the rest of the damage. Well, HP and damage, even though you don't go as much uh, mana with that kind of build. But uh, we can see, particularly once you get those blue buffs later on, you feel a lot more happy about life. Over towards the Herald we go. Ultraprime would like to secure this one with their might buff. Gives you all that much more of a battalion when you go charging at a turret, but it's WE who are in the river first, a teleport being summoned from Decade, Hacker on the other side being body blocked by Wei, which the teleport comes through to no avail as WE just hold the battle lines and prevent any real access into the river. Now they go towards this mid lane, it's a good Q3 on a Yuokai who it's a bit of a slow on him, uh, won't end up with anything too obnoxious happening, but Singularity thrown onto the wave means that's cleared out pretty fast, stay trades back onto the dragon from out of his range at least. But no, but Yuko is completely fine with this because every time he gets a Q pop, he gets an extra little bit of that Stardust being um, brought up as well. It's a really big thing for him. Right now though, because he's done that, he's lower HP. He's using the E to wave clear through. Again, no grub bust for W. It makes it much harder to play this out. You just can't get waves into turrets and single taps on turrets aren't going to do it in terms of chipping them out. Rocket slop and that only stops Doggo, but it's still Potentially a relatively important one. Of course, the other thing is because this is a fasting center, Doggo down three levels on stay is very squishy to things like this Jax if they end up in the wrong position. Okay. Gold advantage to Prime due to uh, the turrets they've taken. And also, to a certain extent, also the center souls give you a little mm -hmm. bit too over time. And uh, we'll, we'll have to keep tracking what the uh, souls... Doggo is on as things come through. Yukai away from mid lane, goes towards bot lane, and Wayward immediately punishes as he steps away from the turret. Now he is pretty much alone under this turret for now. Hacker does come down to help uh, secure that through. Yukai was much more happy being in mid lane. It's much harder to dive him at that point. Mm. So WE taking the time to just make sure that flashes away. And really, really well played from Wayward again. This guy has been such a stalwart for Team WE in the top side. And you see immediate teleport has to be summoned mid as they are aware that a dive might well be coming. The Herald is summoned and driven all the way into this turret. And now I wandy from the back line with the quickness running, trying to get some CC resets. in. The resets begin to fly. Excited as Jinx, who now picks up the Herald and runs in. Rescue, Miss Clexy, Miss Clexy. You can see oh. they're trying to run around. Clicks on the Herald, and uh, sadly that means there won't be a second charge for that one, nor the reset potential going beyond that. So, um, tower down, that's a good amount of gold back for Team W. They can go straight towards this Hextech Soul point, and that'll be the third one of the game for them. Good mix of stats taken between these early dragons too. So, Ultra Prime, big swing and a miss there around this mid lane, out of turret. They try and defend it, but they end up just putting themselves in harm's way. It's a bit of a disaster, that's for sure. Stay clearing up this dragon. Very happily, they get themselves to soul point. They've evened up the gold, and now Jinx at one kill and a, and a, and a soul point. Very difficult to manage. Have a look at this replay because it's just a clean dive, frankly. And this mid lane out of turret is so important. I I almost just wonder if you should have just kept the ASOL in mid lane. Much better at wave clearing, much harder to get on top of that. And you can see that he's much more vulnerable in a side lane at the same right. They now go down towards the bot side, trying to get that six grub buff, work on the tower again. They will get that. That's more gold in pocket. That is nice. But it feels like um, Ultra Prime, they need to be very careful. They do have a scaling composition with the ASOL and the Senna, but it's not like there's no scaling on the other side. You have a Jinx, you have a Jinx with Ghost and a Karma, which can very much help them out. And with Hacker now being kept alone on the spot, so a chance of him going down as well, but just going to use his ult to get out to safety. 
All the while the Wayward and Hung were on the other side, shoving onto this turret. That's a Jackson, a Cassante, who should be able to manage this one, grub buffs or not. In this case, of course, not. He still managed to get that turret back. The WE beginning to prize control of the map away from Ultra Prime, who had, over the last five minutes or so, particularly as Graves started getting into lanes to shove towers, uh, had been the ones kind of in command of that. Now Graves has Collector and Yomu, so... Um, that's a scary Graves, mm -hmm. really scary. You know, it's the, there isn't that mean, even the UD is doing majority magic damage. You can see that there's uh, Merc Treads, Hollow Radiance, Merc Treads, no resist at all, no resist, and then you've got Merc Treads um, on the bot side as well, with a little bit of mixed resist coming in from my 1D. So full lethality coming in from Graves, very high value, means that if you're going in too deep, um, and you're stuck in something like the, the Aurelian Soul Singularity, that E on the floor, then Graves can actually be a one-shot threat to a lot of these carries now at two to three items. Senna only at 64 souls here at the 18-minute mark, so by not farming isn't great rate. And of course, Doggo has been really um, able to follow Hacker as easily either. I will say, this is, um, this is the dieting Senna. It's the not quite fasting, so it's like intermittently fasting, so it's a dieting Senna. You can see there's a little yeah. bit more farm there. It helps a little bit. So that, that, part of that is actually, it's uh, you start doing that, especially once your blood raise is complete, it gets yeah. a little bit easier to trade out some of that farm, because I think there is a kind of ratio about the amount of farm you can take before it starts yeah. denying you souls drops. Yeah, and there was a, there was, this would happen a lot with the double support items as well, but obviously that's no longer in the game. Um, for good reason, that was... Pretty busted? Yeah, pretty busted. I mean, I think there was something where you can't buy... I think they've made it now, so um, after a while... I don't know whether it's in this patch, might be the next one. You can't buy a support item and a Doran's item. It means that you can't just do the instant kind of double stack, and it means that, um, sadly for supports, they can't really get combat stats early and get in lane anymore. Hang behind enemy lines, good vision control from Team WE. Not really sure what they're fighting for. They're fighting for pushing in waves, I guess. Um, that's about it. You're just trying to control this bot side of the map, but I mean, it's two minutes until the dragon. This vision control will not last until that objective spawns, so it's not really the most valuable thing for W, oh, but if you can't engage, maybe it's different. That's a decent engage. Has to flash away, though, so it doesn't really amount to all that much, and for all this WE have managed to wrestle control of the map back a little bit. They still would be a bit afraid about this upcoming soul fight, especially with the fact that Yokai has been holding onto that Skies to Zen now for a very, very long time, and it will be used to the Soul Fight, you nearly guarantee it. If W ever stack up and they get hit by a multi-person ASOL ult into a multi-person Grave Center combo, Ooh. they are they are it's so dead. Hurt. They're so dead. It's two and a half items on all of those people. Uh, they Well, okay, one and a half on the ASOL. He would love to get Leandri's complete before that, but you've got Opportunity, Blood Razor, Dirk, you've got Collector, Ghost Blade, and Last Whisper on the Graves. Like, the amount of burst they've got there is pretty pretty damn huge and as you kind of said the resists are only really indexing into the MR right now so particularly that Graves will hit like an absolute truck assuming that combo could come on through so for all that Ultra Prime are nominally behind they are not without their own counter punches available. And we slow things down again. Mid lane out of turret for Ultra Priming down makes it harder for them to farm up. You can see that Doggo, you know, he's kind of he's kind of doing the half half on the farm now. Teleport back in towards the bot side. Definitely have just been full court pressing mid and bot lane. Top lane too as well. If you look at all three ways being pushed in, trying to stop Ultra Prime getting any sort of entrance towards this Hextech Soul. That really burned them towards the latter stages of the last game. Every time they've looked to contest an objective, they had to fight through an absolute wall of darkness. And once again, it's their entrances to their jungle are about the only thing they can see right now. And Wayward, frontlining. Wayward does frontline, begins to try and get something back here. The damage on the decade is just monstrous! Down before the Dawning Shadow can even think to try and keep him alive. And now you're down an ultimate and a player and a collateral damage just before the Hextech Soul spawn. Joy has Hulk and he has a flash, but he can't quite connect it. Stay. The last of that ghost and the resets help them keep themselves safe. So, Dragon started up by Team W. There is a smite from Hacker. He has a flash. Ultra Prime, they're trying to force the fight. Oh, the Astral Flight comes on through and basically just gets rid of the shield. They're just backing away. They know they can't fight. The health bars are too low and WE. That wall of darkness proves far too lethal. They face check to Ultra Prime. Looking a little less than plus ultra after that one. Oh god. I'm really asking myself now where is the where's the ASOL? Uh, what what's happening with this? You know, there was a chance there to look for a big fight. 
if you're going to pull your ults out, it has to be at this point. Look at this choke point, right? You have the front line in the right place. You don't have Leandris right now, but I think as soon as multiple people stack up, I feel like right here, you just throw the ult. Just try and get something out of it. This was the time to make a big impact, and it's not necessarily landed. Stay huge damage on the Jinx on the other side. Grace has died. Again, while we're in the replay, we won't even know why that happened, but you have Hextech Soul. Baron is up on the table. You don't have Smite, and all in the space of a couple of minutes, the scales have tipped in favor of WE. WE's vision game, once they've gotten to the mid game, has been impeccable this series. It has been so oppressive. They know this is happening. There's no real way of stopping it. A great pathmaker from Wayward denies the hook, but the slow is still pretty good here. So maybe the turnaround damage is all right. Fofo roams over to try and support Baron's the top lane, and Baron's already gone, so Ultra Bump just have to back away. Knowing the rest of WE could come and save their top lane, so they get absolutely nothing. The replay will show us it was a Raptor invade that goes very, very wrong from Hacker. Ah, oh, it's just huge amounts of mobility and lockdown from the trio, which finds them on the Raptors. It's it's a bad it's a bad moment for Hacker, who, you know, his early game pathing that first gank first gank into the bot side was great. Honestly, that was a really good play for him. Sadly, couldn't cover for the second dive. And bot side uh, kind of turned against his own one, but now Hacker. In the late game, he needs to be part of a combo. The combo has not been firing at all, and I really feel like Ultra Prime have struggled to get enough damage down. Yokai has an ult over the wall, can potentially lift for a combo. Go. Here comes the teleport. So they're looking for a fight here. Astral Flight and a potential look for Skies. Finally, descend. They'll get one. Well, what about the rest of the fight? Fofo, very low. Redemption coming on through. Keeps him alive briefly. But for how much longer the slow for the Rylos is still huge. They finally bring him down. But stay alive. Half HP can keep on firing. Wayward finally here to try and body block. But the Astral Flight at the back end is pretty good. But Yokai has no mana left. Doggo so desperately low. And because of the lack of farm is just four levels behind most of the rest of the game. And WE's extended damage. Damage, too difficult to deal with. They'll finally kill off Hung, but that's it. You've got some kills, but it's not broken the game. Yuukai try to run away, and Astral flight over the wall, and the dragon soars to live another day. That was a fight of all time. Of all the fights in the LPL I've ever seen, that was certainly one of them. Ultra Prime, they almost got this kind of like flying dragon into the back line to assassinate multiple people in a row. We'll see this in the replays. Yukai gets himself off a of vision and he does get the skies to send but the, only the center bit goes onto Iwandi. He doesn't get it onto the two behind him. If it catches Stay and Fofo, I think this fight is very, very different. It takes a long time for Fofo to die. Stay would have taken more damage and been CC'd in place. And sadly, Yuukai can't get himself enough DPS to finish off the Jinx before his flight ends. And that means that Stay stays alive. They can't even stop the Jinx from putting out extra DPS on the back end of this fight. Um, just leaps on the dog who started that fight at level nine. He was six levels behind Fofo. And eventually hung with that very scary Jack jumps on his face and forced him out of the fight. And WE once again do what they've been doing all series long, which is just put all of their emphasis into controlling one quadrant of the jungle. 30 seconds left on the Baron. It was a solid attempt from Ultra Prime to try and deny something, but it feels like it mm. might have been a little too little and a little too late. The damage, in many ways, already done this game. Uh, so, Yukai, um, worth noting as well, when you cast your ultimate as a soul, uh, you get 25 stacks per person hit in the center of the ult. Only hit the one the last time. He's on 293 stacks, and he's only halfway to his next game. Because it's, it's, it's 100 stacks after you have used your yeah. ultimate. So, he's used up that first one. Needs to get another 50 stacks somehow, some way. Flies back to lane. It's going to help in terms of that wave clear, potentially. But... WWE not keeping up the siege, not not giving up the siege rather, and hung in the mid lane right now, shuffling another wave in. Just look again, look at that ward line, control ward on one side of that bush, another one just in the bush. They've got a single ward just over the wall near Red Buff, the spotting of hung, and that's about as deep as they can see. That's as deep as they can see, an astral flight. The breath of light from Yokai, and he still takes 20% of his HP by just trying to get to the bloody tower. Well, with the Hextech Soul involved with that too, it adds the extra damage, the extra slow way hooks into a minion. That's an awkward moment. He flashes away. The ultimate from Asol doesn't do that much either. Big damage coming in from Team WE. Does clear out the wave at the very least, so we'll kind of break the siege for now. When you've got a minute or so until Elder, it should be back up in time for that. So I see the thought process at the very least. You've got a second item for Doggo, which is the... Uh, uh, edge of Night, I think understandably so. Nearly at something like a Crypt Bloom or a Void Staff for Yuukai as well. You've got three items on the Grave. The scaling is still good from the side of Ultra Prime, but it is now up against a very fed Jinx. It is up against the Hexol and a, and a Jax that's already ahead of the curve as well as doing just fine in this game as well. It's not an easy late game mm. access 
for have also Prime. gone to the point where Team WE have started to itemize towards armor finally. You know, Wayward has a Randorins, he's going towards a Jack Show. Once that Jack Show is complete, Ultra Prime do not kill the front line very easily. Yukai, he's waiting for a voice, he's waiting for a uh that's a teleport, that'll be fine. But basically, you know, we're waiting for a void staff for a crypt loom from Yuikai for him to start picking up some extra damage again. That item can't come soon enough. Yeah, Hung throws down the counter strike once again, trying to contest with Vision. Ultra Prime finally managed to get a control ward further than that initial bush. Oh, they've just... left mid lane alone. Oh, They're exactly. not in position to wave clear this one, so Stay is going to shred this turret, get a reset from that as well. Get excited, applies on that first tower you take. Fofo desperately low, does get taken down. That's the trade for warding off Ultra Prime from their own mid lane type, but they've lost a member already. That combo finally beginning to fly on Forge Way. Goes on forwards with the hook into the walls to get a depth charge onto Stay. He's got a ghost running, but it's just fine in the back end. But not putting out DPS until just now. Now Iwandi has got the quickness running, trying to keep people locked in place, but only really managed to deny entrance okay, okay, into this. Guys. The hook goes wide, and we've got an Elf Dragon alive and a member down. Exactly. The Elder is alive, mid laner dead. Ooh. Stay has flash. We need to be sense. careful about it. Could come on down, and it's not really going to mount to all that much. The Porcelain Ultimate comes on down, but it's really just a matter of tea being spilled. Hung into the backside, though. Causes chaos. They get two, but what damage is it causing? Huge last embrace, trying to keep people in place. They've lost too many in the back end of this as WE continue to throw down some Counter Strike action. It's CSGO in the river. Headshots Fofo galore. Fofo's teleporting back in. The Smite is still available from Hung as well. He can just go over towards the Elder, and despite the fact that Ultra Prime get themselves a pick before the fight starts. It is not enough to secure themselves a late game objective victory. WE, they don't end the game here, but they get themselves a super buff, even with the teleport coming in from Decade. Realistically, how much is that going to achieve? I don't think it's going to matter that much. Comes on over trying to see if anybody was too low. And now actually could be in danger themselves. They managed to immune the CC with the use of the Blazing Stampede. Go look at this replay, because so, it starts with a bit of a pick. Well, no, I mean, Fofo's already gone here, so this isn't the pick, this is just afterwards. Stay gets separated from his team by the Sky's Descent, and the Rhylize, after the damage comes through from that, puts them into a really bad spot. It means that actually the Graves can get a good amount of burst damage. With the Jinx down, it's a much more playable fight for Ultra Prime, but it's not still playable. The thing is, LPL Jungle Jacks has been a huge factor because of fights like this, where the Jungle Jacks can be a late-game carry. And enough people get caught up in the brawl that Wayward hits multiple people with that Untofo Strike Part 3. You see the damage that Hung does in that AoE scenario as well. And Doggo just no realistic way of disengaging from a Jax at this point in the game. The Baron goes down as well. Double Uber buffs to their name and a broken base. Put WE in a fantastic position to try and end this game. Yeah, worth noting, there's only there's only the Elder buff onto three people. You can see it swirling around the feet of Iwandi, Fofo, and Hung. You can see there's a slight difference in the um, on the right hand side. You can see like the borders around their icons. You can tell which buffs they have depending whether it's purple or purple with a bit of grey on it. You can see that Fofo, just by hitting that cube, has that Elder burning. WE can they end the game here and walk away with an eight and eight scoreline? Has been a statement series from WE. They have been the better team. Pretty much every stage you care to mention two games in a row, two very different compositions in a row. Throw down a singularity to try and clear out the minions and that is one of the frustrating things only a single line of minions, Aurelian Soul's ability to corral minions might be enough to stall the Ultra Prime well, right back only, up against the wall. Only one minion wave coming in means that you can just throw down that singularity which drags them away from that yeah. turret. Again, there's actually no real ability to get them onto the tower itself. They don't have any grub buffs. We talked about that early game from Team WE. So they don't even have that extra added bonus. Mm -hmm. They need to be playing around multiple waves. But top lane, bot lane, pushed onto the other side of the map. Feels like WE's macro has really skipped a beat here. And now as they teleport away oh, with the hex stay. gates, they leave their AD carry. And the combo lands. They'll get one back though, meaning they kill off the Aurelian Soul, who was a lot in the wave clear. Maybe that's enough anyway, but they've lost stay. How much more damage can they do? Why did the backside with a monstrous grand entrance? The might see us to the curtains called at the end of this series. They lose the Graves as well, and despite killing off the Jinx, it's still a game loss for WE off a phenomenal counter engage. Jinx is avenged in the most satisfying of manners. The execute not gonna quite fly into Togo. Despite the Soul Flare landing, Fofo missing another one there, but the Nexus falls, WE 2-0, and Ultra Prime put to the sword. WE walk away, securing themselves at the last gasp their playoffs appearance. This team has had a pretty torrid uh, turn of events. 
in the last half of this split, but they do walk away with an even series record. This was a team that could have potentially been top four with the way that things were looking when they were up at that seven win mark just before, just, you know, coming into the second part of this split. It's taken them a while to finally get themselves the extra win, which can see, secure themselves that playoff. Sadly, that means that Thunder Talk will not be in the spring playoffs themselves. They have been knocked out by Team WE today. And sadly, on the other side of this rift in this series today, Ultra Prime will see themselves put into solid last place, 17th in the LPL. Despite the fact that, you know, I actually quite like this team in regards to the way that, you know, they've persevered through a lot of their difficulties and the way that they've approached different drafts. We've seen the Assault, we saw the Ramus, you meet. Oh yeah. Um, sadly, this team just could not get it together. In too many clutch moments, they have failed to really make the big plays. What an unfortunate day for Ultra Prime. What a great day for WE, though. Breathing a sigh of relief. It's not only a single game win that gets them into playoffs, of course, but they get the full 2-0, which feels very good for them. And of course, they've still got a hell of a gauntlet once they hit playoffs, but it's not a bad way to end the split, is it? And on the other side, though, we've still got to consider FPX versus Thunder Talk. Thunder Talk, their dream shattered before they could even really get off the ground here. It was a faint hope, but the hope remained. No longer, of course, FPX will be looking to be as threatening as they can. They want to get as many game wins as they can to try and make their standing options that little bit easier to work with. Um, so folks, it's going to be a little while until we get into the next game. I'm going to go to the toilet because I need it. Um, so yeah, it should be about 20 minutes